Welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to some Ferdinand gameplay and some Tiger 2 gameplay. And in both matches, I guess I have um, a lot of kills and I have a really nice experience. Today is kind of, yeah, another runner up for the 6.7 disaster. But I'm not so much talking about 6.7, I'm talking about 6.3. When I did uh, my tank review, for example, on the IS-6, I played 20 matches alone in RB. That is a good amount of games to get not just the first impressions, but actually enough to really know the matchmaker, at least for that day and that time of the uh, day, so to speak, when you're playing like in the evening or something. And it changes, you know, the population within War Thunder player base changes, maybe at certain times, at certain nations get played more. I don't know everything. I just can play and observe and do my best. And I did my best, both in the Ferdinand and the Tiger 2P. In fact, it is very easy to just sacrifice the RD251 and also the Tiger 2H which was once one of my beloved tanks and to just yeah play another battle rating 6.7 doesn't support itself anymore i think this is uh, very clear by right now now you have two options first of all you go up to 7.0 or you go down to 6.3 funnily enough at 6.3 this is where the party is really going not so much at 7.0 i will point out from the perspective I see it which is very important and I hope you stay with me so you give me a fair chance of explaining is this the perfect solution no is this probably going on for the next few patches I don't know but for the moment it's the best thing that I personally can come up with and it's a shame for all those people who bought the RU251 or also the Diesel King Tiger uh, to grind German tanks. In fact, I think um, now is the time where other tanks are making a comeback in terms of how I would recommend them. First of all, I always liked the Jagdpanthers, um, but they had certain drawbacks and so on, so I was a little bit hesitating recommending them, but it's a good solid tank. Also the Befehls Jagdpanther, which is practically copy and paste just with a price tag on it and I think you can go to the 6.3 lineup now I was asked to do a lineup video and it came up in more discussions now I played out more and more planes and so on and I have to say the Americans have the absolute advantage at 6.7 not just in tanks but also in in planes in terms of ground striking and also holding themselves especially the 82 sky raider although it has you know now a different battle rating so it technically also can perform at lower battle ratings i tried out the germans and it is true formally the advantage with 7.0 germany is that you have a lot of very unique vehicles and you can make a very good lineup let's just talk about the 7.0 lineup the advantages and disadvantages and also the planes so i think that is a very good start to then compare it to my recommended 6.3 lineup or a lineup that i think is at least very capable of dealing in its entirety First of all, the Jagdtiger. At 7.0, it is a beast. Whoever doubts it, there are not many tanks that um, put themselves in front of a Jagdtiger and say, I'm fine. Then there is also the Kugelblitz, an amazing AAA, even capable of dishing out punishment against tanks. Furthermore, we have the 10.5 cm Tiger 2. Those are the three 7.0 tanks. So you have a, a, so you have a tank that is capable of being a tank destroyer, the Jagdtiger, the Kugelblitz as sort of an ambush tank destroyer, kind of, and also a AAA, of course, very capable one. And then you have the 10.5 cm Tiger 2. The 10.5 cm Tiger 2 has a better gun in terms of raw penetration with the APHE shell, which is the bread and butter for the German guns, at least up until 7.0 and it technically can deal with the 
IS-6 better. But the problem is all those tanks are rather slow and sluggish. They have still no fast tank support. You could argue that the RE-251 is now able to also perform at higher battle ratings. From what I've heard, I don't own it, I have never played it, it is capable of doing so. It's like a, a mini Leopard, I think that phrase goes around quite often. So, in this respect, the tanks are okay-ish. Then we have the planes, and the planes really shine. We have not just the Horton 229 V3 with its fantastic 30 millimeters, but also we have the two Arados. So you have the 6.71, the B2, and you also have the C3, which has an amazing energy retention, can drop bombs twice, and also is uh, very fast in returning to base and so on. Furthermore, you also can back it up with the Narwhal, for example, if you like to snipe big planes, if there are some, and so on. So there are certain uh, 6.7 and 7.0 jets, especially the ME262 variants, the A2A, the uh, reward version, the A1A, the A1-U4. So you have kind of a good lineup, but you see where it's going. It's already going into the jet era and I tested it yesterday. The first game automatically was of course at 8.0 um, up tier. And it was like a 50-50 chance if you had a 7.0 or a 7.3 match where you already have had to struggle as well. And you know, it's not easier to now face the IS-6 all the time in my opinion, but you also had to go into such a chat. The problem is the 10.5 centimeter Tiger is the most mobile one with the best gun in terms of the tanks actually in this respect and that costs you all the spawn points. So to capture a zone, to destroy a few enemies, to get into an aircraft is always you know a fine dance on the line so you make one mistake you're out but that's you might argue that this is the matter of tank realistic battles and i have to agree but let's talk a little bit about the other battle rating about 6.3 why do i think 6.3 is better as i mentioned those this is the 7.0 lineup is very impressive but i have you to i have to ask you the simple question do you have all the planes? Do we have all the tanks recommended? You're probably on the way trying to get them. That is most likely. And it is more likely that you have a battle rating that is more capable at 5.3. And certainly I have to say also in conjunction with how the spawn point system works, it is better to do a 6.3 lineup. Let me explain why. And that has to do with the Jagdpanthers and the Ferdinand. And the Ferdinand and the Jagdpanther, they are kind of the, yeah, the secrets right now. Especially with the IS-6 and the IS, uh, I'm sorry, the IS-2 mod 1944 and the premium version losing the post-war shell and going down to 6.3, which was a buff for the IS-2 overall, in my opinion. They also, in conjunction with the IS-6, if you then get up tiered, they can't penetrate the Ferdinand if it is hull down. There is possibilities and to splash it with HE and so on, but you also are very strong against the APHE shell from the um, T-29. You have problems dealing with the uh, T-34 in terms of not getting penned, but on the other hand, the Ferdinand can absorb an awful amount of damage before it goes down, especially when it's hull down and the engine does not get set on fire or you stand in the water. This is a pure fortress. I played it enough and also in the past from my memory, this was always a beast. What put the Ferdinand down in terms of being one of my favorite vehicles was that all the vehicles around it got buffed and also the appearance of the post-war shell. The post-war shell on the IS-2 has not always been there. This was an uproar in the community and it got removed. In my opinion, rightfully so. So you have at 6.3 the Tiger 2P which is fantastic. End of discussion. 
Um, then there is the Jagd Panther, the Befeels Jagd Panther, and the Ferdinand at 6.3. Yes, you are missing a triple A at your battle rating, but I'm still convinced that the Wirbelwind and the Ostwind are very capable triple A's in terms of shooting down planes and also in dealing with lightly armored vehicles. Everybody dealing with those vehicles at their battle rating knows what I'm talking about. The one problem that I still have is that the Germans have no real fast support in terms of a light tank or a medium tank that is very fast. However, you have really big gun support. I think the Dicke Max, the Nashorn and the Sture Emil can punch at 6.3 as hard as they can punch at their battle rating. Furthermore, let's just talk about the matchmaker. I played again around about 20 matches and I was up to it to 7.0 just twice and it was never fully up tiered to 7.3 I never encountered a 7.3 tank this might be a statistical oddity so take it with a grain of salt but it is such a brutal difference from my 6.7 experience in the Tiger 2 age I did not believe that a battle rating difference of 0.3 could make such a difference so in this respect um, the solution is quite close and very comfortable. So because this kind of lineup is better in terms of tanks, what about aircraft? Well, an aircraft, it doesn't look too shiny at first. On the other hand, because you do not really get up tiered in my experience so far, you can use also lower tiered vehicles and lower tier planes. Well, there are some fantastic planes out there. The ME410 B6 R3, the Do 335s, although very expensive, the Ta 152 C3 with the 30 mm in the nose, the Dora, um, the Dora Focke Wolves that also can carry bombs. Um, then furthermore, some ME410 variants with the 50 mm gun, and of course the Do 217s, beginning from the E2 over the E4. To the K1 and M4 you have four potential bombers that are fast, maneuverable and have a hefty punch in two drops of the first drop being two one ton bombs once fully upgraded and also two times one single ton bomb. While the holographical aiming radical was removed, you still can get used to some semi dive bombing or short term use of the bomb drop site. That's at least my opinion and the results that I got were just convincing. I had so much of a better time. Also, I faced the British much more often and the British versus a long 88, well, I bet my money in this case on the long 88. Of course, as I mentioned, it is not perfect and it's far from perfect. It is a bit underestimated what 6.3 can do because of the former glory of 6.7 but remember where the 6.7 glory came from there was no tank that was competitive to the Henschel King Tiger um, that was even before there was the Super Pershing the Super Pershing technically on paper was an opponent but really could never punch the same weight then the T29 got introduced and the IS-6 got introduced while the King Tiger the Henschel version got nerfed and the gun also was not no long was no longer adequate at 6.7 or is no longer really adequate at 6.7 in this respect i agreed with all the people that say that the 10.5 cm king tiger has more in common with the T29 and also i'm missing the stabilizer and the auto loading mechanism on this tank which it should have if you look into the description within War Thunder on the 10.5 cm King Tiger. So that is just something for you. Furthermore, because we have to do it here with props, I would recommend furthermore certain other planes. What about all the A-series Focke Wolves with their rockets? And, you know, they have quite some punch. It is one kill that is very, um, that is very much likely with the Werfergranate 21. You have one launch of two rockets and they hit very hard. Furthermore, then you have a lot of 20mm firepower and while you are not very good in a dogfight, you know, if there are multi -pla multiple planes up, 
just remember all your teamwork and team play from realistic air battles. But again, it's a long way up until the point that you upgrade. And that is another message. With playing the 6.3 lineup so long, you profit from having spader tanks. You can skip 6.7 and you can research for the next lineup at 7.0. Maybe with the next patch, things might change, but this is the solution for the moment. So you just spade your Ferdinand, you spade your Porsche King Tiger, and you spade your Jagdpanther. And you also can take into account lower tiered vehicles, as I mentioned, like the Sture Emil, or like the Nasan, or like the Dicky Max. Those are vehicles that are not so tightly bound in terms of their real performance towards the battle rating because they are literally glass cannons. And in this respect, this is a hidden gem. And I, this is just a tip that is more likely that more people profit from, as if I say, go to 7.0. Most people are still in the grinding process and they are probably just bought the Tiger 2 H SLA 16, or they finally researched the Tiger 2 H and now are very disappointed with what is wrong. This is my solution going to 6.3 or staying at 6.3 and just spade those vehicles and just research everything around it. Maybe you even could um, collect some money in the meantime. The last final words might be towards why this f works. Well, I have to say a lot of people seem to try to um, avoid this 6.7, 7.0 bracket at the moment. This is an assumption, I don't know it. I looked into the other tech trees and I found out that at 6.3 you still have the Walker Bulldog and the Super Hellcat, which are also vehicles that are used quite commonly. Then also 6.0 is a widely used battle rating going back to, uh, to 6. Three, we have the T44, the SU100, the T44-122, both IS-2s Mod 1944 and the ASU-85. And again, also a few tanks with 6.0, amongst them, of course, the um, IS-2, the normal one. For the British, we have the Charioteer and the Centurion Mark III at 6.3. So you have quite a population there amongst all the nations and i think that might be the reason why this works currently again 20 matches played just two up tiers you might um add or remove a little bit of the up tier whatever you like in your experience let me know in the comment section if you want to try out if you think this is a good idea if you are in into chairman tanks you know this is a solution under the aspect that you want to still play the tanks that you grinded for such a long time and you still want to not play top tier or a battle rating where you have to risk to get up tiered all the time or in the majority of cases against enemies that are far superior towards you furthermore i have to say it is nice that both the ferdinand and the porsche king tiger seem to have they, they still seem to remain a lot of the survivability that the old henschel king tiger was famous for in this respect that's all that i can recommend so again let me know in the comment section your opinion about this do you think this is a bad idea do you think this is a good idea have you tried it out yet and yeah just also come up with potential solutions that you have in mind let me just know i'm very interested in that regarding german tanks for other nations there are different solutions and in this respect i have to say thanks for watching thanks for listening uh, I hope you liked the video. Please give it a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other on the battlefields of War Thunder.